Welcome back to Old School Sports and our Franchise Hockey Manager 9 playthrough of the Chicago Blackhawks. We have just completed the 2030 to 2031 season and the Blackhawks, by virtue of a 6-1 victory over the Buffalo Sabres yesterday, are your Stanley Cup champions, having won a 4-3 epic Stanley Cup finals against the Sabres. This Blackhawks team had won the President's Trophy three consecutive seasons, but this was by far our best run in the playoffs over those three years. Uh, the two previous seasons, we hadn't made it past the second round, and one of them we even got bounced out in the first round. So uh, a nice finish to the season and a nice finish to the series for our Blackhawks. If you enjoy our content, would sincerely appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, like our videos. Uh, not sure what the next step is going to be in hockey, in franchise hockey manager, but we are going to uh, recap in this episode our top performers, recap the series at large, and uh, at least get the Blackhawks position so that if we do jump back into the hockey world at uh, some point in the future, the Blackhawks and this league will be in good shape to do that. And taking a look at our top performers from this Stanley Cup championship season, our backup goalie, Philip Svetaback, because of that injury that you can see to Jesper Wallstedt, ended up playing the last three games of the Stanley Cup finals. Uh, lost the first, but then won two in a row as the Blackhawks came back to claim the title. Uh, Svetaback did not get a ton of playing time this season, but was 9-4 and four in the regular season with a shutout. 268 goals against 917 save percentage. Uh, once again, some excellent work as our backup goaltender. And of course, what he did in the last three games of the Stanley Cup playoffs will never be forgotten. And then our starting goalie, Jesper Wellstedt, who ended up missing those last three games of the playoffs uh, with that bruised cheekbone, had an incredible regular season, 48 wins, 15 losses, 5 overtime losses, 7 shutouts during the regular season. He had 6 shutouts during the first two rounds of the playoffs alone, 231 goals against a 926 save percentage. He is one of the finalists for the Vezina Trophy this year. He is also, uh, I think, a strong candidate for the Conn Smythe. Don't know if missing those last three games when we did clinch the Stanley Cup will uh, impact the voting on that, but certainly would think that he is one of the strongest candidates on our team for playoff MVP as well. And then we do have the youngster Robinson Leanders who came up to back up Svetaback those last few games of the playoffs. And you can see did make his NHL debut this past year, uh, winning the one game that he participated in. Turning to our non-goalies, uh, we had a great offense and a excellent defense this past season, as you would expect of a team that scored 121 points and won 58 games, as well as a Stanley Cup. Uh, Kent Johnson in his second year with the team had a great performance, led the team with 40 goals, tied for the team lead with 53 assists. Obviously that leads to a team leading 93 points. Uh, his plus 47 plus minus was also the best on the team. Uh, the left winger just had an incredible season for us. Dylan Larkin, the veteran center, who moved down to the second line this year, still had an excellent season, 38 goals, 40 assists, uh, third consecutive healthy and very productive season from the veteran after he did have some injury issues in the middle of his career with the Blackhawks. Will Shields, who uh, played on the right wing with Larkin on that second line, very productive with a team tied for the lead, 53 assists along with Johnson, 76 points in his 78 games. Uh, Isaac Rosen, our first line right winger, his first year with the team, 28 goals and 46 assists, plus 35, so very productive there. Uh, Victor Eklund, 
Right winger on the second line, 60 points, including 19 goals. Defenseman Sam Renzel, uh, one of the finalists for the Norris Trophy, 59 points and plus 40 on the season. Quinton Byfield, our first line center, uh, missed about 20 games due to injury. Still hit 18 goals, 39 assists, plus 35 on the season. Quinn Hughes, who along with Rinzel is also a finalist for the Norris, had 55 points in 74 games. Uh, you can see with two Norris Trophy winners, uh, Norris Trophy finalists, hopefully one of whom will be a Norris Trophy winner. Uh, we get some pretty good production on the offensive side out of our defensemen, but uh, both of these guys were over plus 30 on the season, so very productive overall. Nathan Villeneuve scored 48 points for us. Uh, Alex Bocage with 44. Uh, Matteo Rotundi, a defenseman, also with 44 points, including 33 assists. Cole Sillinger, the third-line left winger, a extremely high-quality third-line left winger with 41 points, plus 20 on the year. Uh, defenseman Simone Nemec with 36 points. Roy Chung, the youngster, with 35. Chung was explosive in terms of his goal scoring during the playoffs. Another dark horse candidate, perhaps, for the Conn Smythe. Uh, didn't n mention that Isaac Rosen had a ton of assists in the playoffs, so I think he's certainly a strong candidate for the Conn Smythe also. Uh, Linus Erickson, fourth line left winger, very productive with 17 goals. Uh, the young defenseman, Xavier Veyu, a nice second season for us. Uh, pretty similar production to what he had as a rookie. Uh, Adam Jekko, 26 points in 68 games, primarily as a fourth-line player. Uh, Tomas Vesely and Matthias Lefreriere, also uh, players towards the bottom of the roster, typically playing on the fourth line when they did play. And then Luke Coughlin was our seventh defenseman. He's heading into free agency. Was productive enough, plus 11 in the 29 games that he played, uh, but certainly don't think we'll be bringing him back. And we'll take a um, quick look at the playoff stats. Um, and as I mentioned, Isaac Rosen with 19 assists, 28 total points, was the most productive offensive player uh, tied for the team leading goals with Quinton Byfield with nine. Kent Johnson had eight as he continued his strong play. And then among the defensemen, Quinn Hughes was the top scorer with 19 points in our 23 games. Uh, you can see a lot of big plus minus numbers for everybody led by the defenseman Sam Rinzel at plus 27. So just an excellent all-around season for the Blackhawks here in 2030 to 2031. And with the season now over, we're getting to the time where we need to make some rough decisions about the future for the Blackhawks. Uh, you can see that we've got most of the roster already signed to extensions, uh, but three free agents, uh, one Luke Coughlin, who we mentioned, seventh defenseman this year, and he's looking for about $5.5 million a year, so that's certainly not anything that's going to work for us, given that we're very close to the salary cap. And then we've got a huge decision to make uh, between... Our first line center, Quinton Byfield, and our potential Vezina winning goalie, Jesper Walsh, that we can probably only bring one of them back right now. Certainly a chance that when we get into free agency, we could make some trades and adjust things um, to give us an opportunity to have them both back on the team next year. Byfield, uh, we talked about his solid regular season when he was healthy. Looking for almost $10 million a year for five years. He's going to be turning uh, 29 years old in the offseason. Uh, Jesper Wallstedt obviously had an incredible regular season, an incredible run through the playoffs. Looking for a little over $8 million in five years. I do really like um, the strong goaltending duo that we have had with Wallstedt and Svetabak. There's certainly an argument to be made that uh, Svetabak is ready to become an everyday goaltender. But after what we just got out of Wallstedt during the regular season in the playoffs, it's going to be tough for me to move on from him, especially because Svetabak at age 29 is already um, 
starting to decline a bit. Now, admittedly, Wallstead's going to turn 29 by November, early in the regular season. But I think I am leaning towards um, Wallstead being the one we make the offer to. You can see, as we mentioned, um, by field a free agent, Julian Mays, who's on the injured list, a free agent and then Coughlin and Wallstead, also potential free agents. So we've got most of the core of this team coming back. But just um, don't know if we're going to be able to fit both Wallstead and uh, Quinton Byfield under the cap next year. So I think for the time being, we are going to... Go with Mr. Wallstead and see if we can get an offer to him for a little less than what he's looking for. He's looking for, as we mentioned, almost $8.4 million for five years. We're going to, of course, as we always do, try to save some money. See what he thinks about $7.45 million a year for four years. Definitely wants more money than that and prefers five years. Um... What about seven and three quarter million a year? And we'll pump it up to the five years that you're looking for, Jesper. Says it's a fair offer. He'll be in touch with us soon. So we may be able to get him signed for five years, seven and three quarter million a year, which would be a uh, decent contract for us. And I do think we're going to need Byfield back as well. We may be in a situation where we have to sling some other contracts overboard, but um, certainly think that um, competing for him in free agency makes sense, but probably do want to actually see who's going to be available in free agency potentially before we do that. You take a look at upcoming free agents, and there's a lot of talent there. Um, especially at center, Logan Cooley, potentially Tim Stutzel, Jake Carabella, Jack Drury is probably a little older than we're looking for, but certainly some high-end talent at the center position is going to be potentially hitting uh, the free agent market. And in the case of both Cooley and uh, Carabella, a bit younger than even what we have with Byfield. So I don't think that we're going to make him an offer right now, but certainly would be open to him returning next year because he's certainly an incredibly valuable and useful player for us. And we have gotten Jesper Wallstedt signed, so it would be nice to have him back next year on that five-year extension. I would think that if we do continue playing this at some point in the future, um, Svetaback will probably be gone after next season. Um, hard to imagine. We're going to bring him back at a big number as a 30-year-old. So potentially Ryerson Leanders could be taking over as our backup goalie. And then we've also got some younger talent in the farm system that eventually could be backing up Walst at some at some point over the next half decade. And not surprisingly, after winning our second Stanley Cup championship in the nine years of this playthrough, uh, we've gotten an extension from uh, ownership. Not a shock to see that. Uh, clearly everything is going well with the Blackhawks when we look at Team Harmony. Very harmonious locker room. Not a lot of disruptive, selfish, or unpopular players, although we do have a couple that are outspoken. But the locker room is in good shape. No conflicts, no clicks. Uh, job security pretty much uh, off the map, although we do have a off-ice incident involving Matteo Rotundi apparently. But uh, job security is fine, and uh, the fans are pleased with us. Have to look at what that off-ice incident is. Fans aren't happy about it. Teammates don't seem particularly bothered, so doesn't seem uh, like a major issue for us to lose too much sleep over. And as we get closer to award season, 
and uh, the beginning of free agency just kind of rethinking buy field and you can see we've only got 8.3 million dollars in salary cap space so we could obviously sign him to a contract for the nine and a half to ten million that he's looking for and then we'd have to make a move or two um, certainly moving on from Matthias Leferriere would open up some space for us and kind of an obvious move given his um, role on the fourth line could certainly replace him with somebody younger that would definitely free up um, you know probably a bit over a million dollars between what we're paying him and what the minimum contract is that would allow us to go a bit higher uh, so there's certainly moves that we're going to be able to make to get us uh, where we need to be salary wise but given that there are a number of decent centers who look like they're going to be hitting the free agent wire um, unless Byfield's demands have come down a bit, which I don't think they would have at this point. Uh, 9.4 million, um, six years, no movement clause. I think we just let him hit the open market, and then we uh, go with who we think is the best value among those top three or four centers on the open market and try to bring that person on board. And uh, we'll need to make some adjustments in trades and changes in the offseason regardless, I would think. And as we get close to the new NHL financial year on July 1st, uh, we've got a lot of uh, young prospects that we're going to try to bring on board, uh, most notably former first-round pick um, Corey Downing. We've made an offer to him. don't think he's ever going to be an incredible uh, NHL player, but he is only 20 years old. We think he's kind of reached his potential at this point. But certainly if he could improve on the mental and physical side, uh, Looks like he could be a really interesting offensive player and not uh, completely useless defensively. You can see he's pretty much been a consistent uh, 30, 35, 40 goal scorer with Everett over the past three years. Hasn't necessarily shown a ton of improvement in his uh, statistical output, which for a player going from 17 up to age 18 up to age 19 would expect him to have gotten a little more dominant. Um, so that's perhaps a little disappointing and perhaps um, evidence that he really has kind of reached his potential at this point, which is what our scouts do believe. And not surprisingly, looking at the free agency preview, uh, Quinton Byfield of our team uh, is expected to be one of the top free agents on the markets uh, on the market. Other than that, you can see we don't have a ton of um, top line players hitting free agency. I'm actually surprised that they didn't um, mention among the team. It just shows Byfield and then Evan Kanyan, who's uh, played in the AHL for the last several years, but a little surprising. I uh, don't really understand why uh, Luke Coughlin isn't mentioned, because I'm pretty confident he's uh, not a... Um, oh, I guess he is a restricted free agent at this point. I keep forgetting how young he really is and how unexperienced he is. So we have auto-qualified him, uh, looking for over $6 million a year. So not sure if he's going to get that from anybody. Certainly not going to get it from us. So he may end up being one of the players who just randomly sits out a season in the middle of his career, which is um, one of the minor flaws with uh, FHM that annoys me sometimes. Hopefully that won't become the case with Coughlin, but uh, certainly possible that he's looking for huge money that nobody's going to give him this offseason. And we'll take a look at the award ceremony now. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, obviously we're going to have a Conn Smythe winner. I guess not obviously. It's possible someone from Boston gets the award, but I think that we will uh, we've got Wallstedt nominated for the Vezina. We've been nominated for the Jack Adams, although offensively not for Executive of the Year. I mentioned Hughes and Rinzel, both candidates for the Norris. And then you can see uh, the rest of the awards that have already been announced. Uh, no Blackhawks among that crew. So Hart Trophy, we will not be winning. Con Smythe, as I mentioned, I think that uh, Rosen and Wallstedt, in my mind, are probably the top two 
candidates out there would be kind of interesting if off of his uh, incredible goal scoring performance for a defenseman in the playoffs that Roy Chung got some votes. I don't expect to see that. Um, but the con Smythe is going to go to Isaac Rosen. Those uh, nine goals, 19 assists, our top goal scorer through the playoffs. And the fact that he actually played all 23 of our games probably worked in the favor of Rosen, who has proven to be a really nice free agent signing for us. Calder goes to Edwin Wilhelmsen. Norris, let's hope that it's Rinzel or Hughes. Uh, Rasmus Sandin, let's see what his numbers look like for the year. 53 points, plus 38. Um, played 20 minutes a game with a 69 game rating. I would tend to think that uh, Hughes or Rinzel would win over him. Hughes with 55 points, plus 33 on the season. I tend to think it's probably going to be Rinzel, uh, the youngster. 59 points, plus 40 on the season, played almost 24 minutes a game. Um, the game ratings actually do favor Sandine over our two guys, but if I was a betting man, I would say that it's going to be Sam Renzel. And it is Sam Renzel, the Norris Trophy for 2030 to 2031. Selkie goes to Ryan Green, Vezina, Wallstedt. Not a surprise there, an incredible performance, 68 goals, games played. Uh, we talked about the 48 wins, 926 save percentage, 7 shutouts, just a brilliant performance, and a little bit of uh, redemption after losing out to teammate Isaac Rosen for the Con Smythe. Executive of the year, we don't care. Should have been us with our 58-win season, but because we've been so good for so long, don't tend to get nominated. And Jack Adams would have to think that we get that. Old School Sports closes things out with the Jack Adams Trophy. In, and once again, this is one of our little um, problems with the game. And we'll check in this. It says that we had 59 wins, even though we only had 58 wins in the regular season. It seems like sometimes uh, you get credited with a couple of extra wins somehow in the game, which we'll see when we go into our... Uh, Recap of our performance over the close to decade that we've been the general manager in Colorado or in Chicago, Colorado. I'm conflicting things with my out of the park baseball sim. Apologies for that. And obviously we've got about as good as evaluation as you can possibly get. Manager of the year, reached the playoffs, winning season, 600 winning percentage, finished first in the regular season, reached the finals and won the championship, so a season score of 46. Uh, that's the best of this playthrough. I do feel like in past versions of FHM I've gotten a higher season score than that, but um, certainly a big year, and that leaves us with nine available points to improve our skills. Uh, finally getting to be more productive in terms of our coach ratings will also give us a time to bolster uh, all of the GM ratings and still have a couple extra points to put around. Um, I think we'll we'll get up to 12 and everything, so we'll add those last two points into this eh, self-preservation I'm not that concerned about add another point to negotiating skill since we may be uh, working with uh, a lot of centers this offseason and uh, need to get somebody on board as cheaply as possible. So we will move on into the 2031 to 2032 season, move over to July 1st and uh, have some final thoughts on how this series has gone. And taking a look back at the nine years of this playthrough with the Chicago Blackhawks, we've been playing uh, this game for several months now online and do appreciate all of our viewers who have uh, watched our videos, commented, liked the videos, subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that and making it possible for us to share our thoughts on Franchise Hockey Manager and other games with all of you. 
Uh, you can see nine games. As I mentioned, there is that glitch that's been in the game in previous versions where a few of the years it ends up giving you extra games and extra points, which annoys me. Uh, not surprisingly that this year with 121, or this past season with 121, not 123 point regular season and winning the championship was our highest uh, score. Second highest was our other championship year in 2023 to 24. Uh, can probably look at the, the real numbers when we go to the Blackhawks and the history and you can see 121 points this past season as I talked about. Um, did add uh, two Stanley Cup championships into the Blackhawks trophy case started out in 2022 to 2023 did not make the playoffs as we took over a pretty poor blackhawks team that had just 68 points the year before did improve and were in playoff contention uh, moved on from jonathan taves decided that uh, we could still build around patrick kane for a few years and we started the rebuild snuck into the playoffs in 2023 24 and we did end up uh, getting that surprise championship with a 96-point team. Got a fourth Stanley Cup title for Patrick Kane on his resume before eventually we moved on from him a couple of seasons after that. Then a playoff year again, uh, but barely making it into the playoffs as we tried to defend our title. Then two rough years in a row where we were competing for a playoff spot until the final days of the season but ended up missing uh, both years. 2027-28, the sixth year of the playthrough, finally got back into the playoffs. And then the last three years, uh, the rebuild really kicked into high gear with a lot of the big offensive players that we just talked about and that incredible goaltending duo that we have of Jesper Wallstedt and Philip Svetaback. As I mentioned, three consecutive President's Trophy over these final three years, three consecutive 50-plus win seasons, uh, three consecutive playoff appearances, and most importantly, uh, as we've talked about plenty, we did pick up that second Stanley Cup championship in this our final and ninth season with the Blackhawks. So all in all, was a really interesting playthrough. Enjoyed it. Appreciated all of the interaction with the viewers and all of your thoughts on how to make this team better and make my skills in FHM better. I am sure we will, we will be back with another uh, FHM playthrough in the coming years. But right now with uh, OOTP24, uh, likely to be released on Steam within moments. Uh, I checked before I started doing this episode relatively early this morning and it wasn't available on Steam yet. But it certainly will be available out there at some point uh, later today. And uh, I'm going to jump in and spend a little more time on the baseball simulations going forward. But we won't forget about Franchise Hockey Manager. At some point, we will be back. Until then, thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day.